All right. Hey, guys. We are currently live. We'll be here talking with Liam today. How's it going, Liam? That's me. I'm good. I'm COVID safe. I'm COVID safe, nice. guys. It's all good. And you have I got the Castle sticker. Gray Skull in the back, too. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. My studio is back. I built it from the grounds up, from the bones of the earth, and I filled the walls with lightning. And now I'm able to uh, project myself across the entire world. Take that, you know. Take that, you know, magic. So I have a quick question nice. before we jump into some update type stuff. Have you seen... Uh, he-man revelations yet oh yikes you know i did this amazing four-hour stream i shared it just the other day just yesterday mm -hmm. actually again but i did this amazing four-hour stream with uh with Vinny and rini and uh and red gaze and if you guys have not seen that stream yet go check it out it's an amazing stream where we break down everything wrong with it from a story point i'm a massive masters of the universe fan right mm-hmm so um, this was like watching m my most beloved property just sort of roll in its grave. Trivial like I was like, it's. I've known that this was going to happen for a while, but because I've had access to the early screeners and the early scripts, you know, from about it was about a month and a half before we got them to Clownfish, but like um, it just was like it, it's a fucking mess. They've changed some things up, but they've made it worse, and. Um, it just, they really destroyed something that was something I deeply, deeply loved. And, um, but yeah, and I also did an, a video uh, that I did live with Liam called the Orco Memorial Stream. So you guys can check that out. It's only a half hour stream where I talk about, I that lose my so shit. so messed up that he spoiled that ahead of time, man. That yeah. was just out of line. Yeah, and he's bragging about it. He's laughing about it, saying that no one liked Orko and shit. And it just showed that to me well, that he, he had... Didn't, people yeah. had the toys, though, didn't they? Yeah, Not and uh, he was... Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what I talk about in my video. He was one of the most popular toys from that line and uh, one of the most beloved characters of the series by creators, showrunners. Um, Orko's highly popular with fans. You know, he might be a bit goofy, you know, but... Uh, the way they rewrote his origin, they changed who he was. Yeah, please, like DJ D says, hit that like button. Help, uh, help, uh, hit that like, smash that subscribe, ring that bell, and uh, yeah, no, it was a uh, yeah, it's uh, it was just Dude, atrocious. I showed some people like mm -hmm. uh, the Tila stuff, and I showed it with the shaved head. I'm like, hey, what do you think of this character? They're like, oh, that dude looks interesting, bro. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I'm like, that's Yikes. supposed to be a trick. And then they're like, wait a minute. <laughs> that's supposed to be the warrior goddess of ivory and gold, Teela exactly. of Eternals. They thought that was a new character. And they're like, wait, what? That's Teela? Dude. Yeah. That's well, I, I think, I think, I think we can sum it up like this. I'm going to be, uh, I think we can sum it up like this. It's uh, you guys all lied to me. Fuck you, dad. I'm going to go be a lesbian. <laughs> the, uh, that's uh that that's her that's her entire like character. Lie. I'm like he didn't she didn't specifically go to He-Man and say, "Hey, are you Prince Adam?" And then he's like, "Oh, no, it's like not it's not me." Like they couldn't trust her cuz she would <laughs> react like she is. They're like, "We the can't tell you that like Adam's He-Man. Look at you, your families fine. always keep all sorts of secrets hidden. Like you didn't mm -hmm. expect their secrets." Yeah, you know, you think that you're going to be privy to everything. Well, everyone I knew knew. And it's like, look at how you're fucking reacting, woman. The king didn't like, even you're, know. <laughs> you're hysterical. We're going to have to, you know, like you're hysterical, woman. It's like now I'm a now I'm a chauvinist for saying it. But look at how you're acting. What else would you call it but hysteria? And she went and changed. Andra, they tried to insinuate stuff and then they did nothing with it. I'm like, why did you waste everybody's time here? The same way that they, the same reason that they wait, race swapped her into a black lady when she used to be a ginger because they've yeah. got agendas. It's like they can't. The Masters Universe property has a bunch of African American or African attorney and characters they that they could have, that they could have used, that they could have made so prominent many. in the series. So many. Or and instead, they one. had to race swap. They had to race swap and bring this character that doesn't have an action figure. She's like this obscure comic book character. Uh -huh. Like they're going to. 
They're going to bring her forward. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I thought you guys said that this was a sequel based on the toy line because you couldn't get the Funmation rights. This thing's been a fucking mess. Like I said, go watch this four-hour stream that Vinny and I did when you guys have the chance. Don't do it now. Like, hang around here now. But, uh, but like, we go over the, the creative team involved when they brought Kevin Smith on because he wasn't the original showrunner, by the way. He's damage oh, control. Wait. wait, who was who was there before him? Well... I think it's this funny that no one's talking about that because I've been because I've been talking about this for more than a year. For more than oh. a year, I've been trying to talk about this and no one's listened. The series comes out now, all of a sudden it's a huge outrage. I'm like, well, I've been warning you guys. Uh, they have the they have the guys that did the first season of Supergirl writing and developing the show. Oh wow! From CW Supergirl, that's who developed Masters, the new Masters of the Universe franchise. It was meant to be a a, a uh, what do they call it? They were meant to be sunsetting the property. That was the term that was used, mm -hmm. uh, so that older fans would finally have closure to the original. You know, after twenty years, they'd have like a nice, cool battle between Skeletor and He Man for Castle Grayskull, and He Man would win, and it, everyone would be like, "That was awesome and great," and it would be a little bit more mature for older audiences. Mm -hmm. And uh, instead. Instead, they put it in the hands of incompetent people. It was so bad that when they were screening the screeners, like the black and white screeners and stuff that I've got, when they were showing them to people to get their reaction, they had people that were being paid to sit there, watch it, walk out in outrage. Just get oh, up and walk out. And that's when they were... That's when they went. The pacing uh -oh. is totally off on that show because that feels they, like two they changed worth of content. They chopped it all up. They chopped it all up, right? So, like, they went, what the fuck are we going to do? And they went and they got Kevin Smith and they said, look, you're a, uh, we're going to bring you on, Kevin. We're going to make you the showrunner and uh, you're going to make changes. So, in come Hamill. In comes Hamill. In comes Mich Sarah Michelle Gala. In comes a whole bunch of celebrity voice actors that everyone thinks is cool and hip. And uh, they have the voice of Skeletor who is meant to be doing Skeletor and he's doing he Moss Man. He's doing Moss Man. Oh, wow. That's like two lines. That's why it sounded familiar, but then Moss Man gets killed off. So like, yeah. Yeah. It's I'll, ridiculous. I guess it's I like, should have said spoiler alert, but you know. You know who cares? Nobody's who cares watching. at this point? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it's, yeah, uh, it's, oh, it and just, then like uh, Felix here says about Kevin Smith doesn't know the lore, and that reminded yeah. me because Skeletor was acting like in a conversation with Andra that he had that skull face, like basically since he was born, he's kind of insinuating that, yeah. like he's born that way, and I'm like, God, <laughs> you're not yeah, uh, one of the skull, <laughs> yeah. He doesn't know. He doesn't know shit. It's like he doesn't know anything. It's like I. It was just heinous missteps the entire fucking time, right? And and it it legitimately broke my heart. I'm probably one of the few actual fans of Masters of the Universe that are out here on on social media talking about this in a big way. Like there are others, but. Not a lot of them are just talking about it because it's topical, but I'm talking about it because I genuinely love this property and I wanted to see it get the farewell that it was meant to have, or hopefully be good enough that it could be passed to another generation of kids mm -hmm. and be something great. And they put people that were intellectually intellectually bankrupt behind it that uh, and they fucked it. And now yeah. they've destroyed a massive the part IP. of my childhood. The IP yeah. itself has taken a big hit. It I mean, and that's the back goal. and forth, they're, and then they're like, uh, the reviews are getting like bombed. Like, come on, guys. Yeah, and it's that was their goal. They were just, they were strip mining it out because they know that outrage uh, culture and cancel culture, not cancel culture, sorry, but outrage culture and uh, and mob mentality will market the program longer and keep more people watching it and, and more Kevin people talking Smith about it. So smug. Did you see his live stream? Uh, I didn't. Did. I couldn't watch okay. it. It's I couldn't watch it. That you didn't probably because yeah. he was just there on his soapbox. It was some Comic Con related thing on his YouTube channel. Is that the one where as soon as it, it is that out. the one where as soon as it ended, as soon as it ended, like was it the after show thing where like I've seen the clip where he's like, "We didn't just kill." Can I do it? Have they seen it yet? I didn't just kill Adam once. We killed yeah. him twice, and I was Dude. like. 
And then he was saying some other crazy stuff. And it was it was just thing after thing. And then he basically admits that it's it's basically Tila's taking the helm of this series. Well, and that's he, the thing. He, it was and he, he lied we, about it. And he's like, oh, it comes with the job type of thing. And it's like, dude, you don't just you, you can deflect, yeah. you can be like, I can't comment on that, but you don't straight up lie. And then you quote tweet other people and try to drag certain people like clownfish tv because they guessed it right like they didn't guess it right control, he, they like, were hit off that? they were told they were told about it like a year ago it wasn't a guess they knew what was going on they were mm -hmm. like when we we're sitting down we're like who the fuck like there was a couple of other writers that were involved too we're like fucking who do we tell this shit is going on to like because you know writers talk we've got guilds and stuff it's like so what the fuck do we do like without any of us getting in any trouble like how do we let people know what the fuck's going on so that this can possibly be course corrected while everything was still fucking up in the air right um so that this can actually be good because we don't want to see masters of the universe fucking die you know this is shit we love so like we're talking about it and we, we sort of threw up Tug and other things. I was like, no, Tug's sort of too sort of controversial because, like, of all of the stuff that's going on right now. They're, they're like, going to just dismiss anything he says. But Clownfish, they're pretty on point. They're pretty, uh, they're out of the, they stay out of the bullshit. They got a pretty solid audience. And so, you know, they send over the stuff to them and let them know what's going on. And they talk a little bit about it, you know. Um, but then, like, you know, after that, like people just sort of said, Oh, okay. And that wasn't until now that everything's exploded. And I'm just, it's too late for, uh, to fix anything for now. Changes, yeah. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, it just breaks my heart. It genuinely breaks my heart because like, I feel like we've got as we're, we're custodians of culture. We've got a responsibility to these characters and to the fans. Mm -hmm. and, and I just lore. don't think the lore is yeah. important. Yeah. You know, I just don't think that people really, uh, you know, really generally care about a lot of the shit they're doing. They're just here to strip mine, get as much out of it as they can, and then just throw it into a pile and move on to the next thing. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Like those guys, like I said, they were the – so the story behind them, right, the reason that we even found out about this shit was because there was, there was bragging involved on their end. And uh, so they wanted to do a lot more with CW Supergirl than the budget would basically allow them to do because <laughs> that's the story of every CW. Yeah. <laughs> so basically they thought if we do an animated series, then we don't have the same sort of limitations. We can go wild. Right. Yeah. Um, so they're really excited about that. And so they snatched up this opportunity through Maddie and, uh, and basically, um, and basically got in and did the thing. But then, like, instead of... They sort of took the job when they were told, like, yeah, this is meant to be a sort of a, a goodbye to the... A goodbye to the... Uh, to the sort of... For the fans. A proper goodbye send-off so that when we release the new CG series for kids, we don't have a bunch of old men screaming, that's not my He-Man, because they'll have the toy line that just came out, Origins, and they'll have... Um, they'll have their... Uh, they'll have... You know what I'm saying? The uh, they'll have this big, awesome, more adult mm -hmm. sort of themed ending show to their universe, and they'll, they'll be like, "That was cool." Service both fan groups. I mean, that's just a smart mm -hmm. business decision. It's another but, when you're just yeah. overhaul, just tearing yeah, but, down but, your IP and devaluing. That's not. But that's not the end of it, though. That's not. That's not even. If that was just it, we'd go. This is a tale as old as time, right? Get what go mm -hmm. broke. But what it was was these uh these guys were like, no, we don't want to end the series. What we want, because we want to make this sort of Supergirl series that we wanted, that we've got in our mind with this super powerful female lead that's going to do all this awesome stuff. Like, this, you know, this is what we want to do. Like, you know, ultra feminist girl. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this series about Teela and then we're going to try and leverage this into a Teela spinoff series. No, I'm not joking. They're going to try and leverage this into a Teela spinoff series instead of it being the end of the series like it was meant to be. And by the time fucking the powers that be got the shit into their hands and that people could sort of veto anything. It was too late because they didn't realize what was being done, that these guys had just deviated so severely from their fucking, from the course. They were like, yeah, yeah, everything's going to be fine. You'll see where we're going and see where we're going. And then they had finished episodes in black and white screeners done up. They had everything, the animation all done up. And it was mm -hmm. not this big farewell to He-Man. It was this big coming to power story with Teela 
where she's going to ultimately, uh, it, unless they deviate from the script, spoiler alert, guys. Now, this could be changed because I think this is the reason the series was cut in half because I think they're changing the second half of the season. But um, but if they don't change, what we're going to end up with is Teela in a mechanized suit, the same as <laughs> Man at Arms. No, no, no. Uh, in a mechanized suit, which is built to contain the powers of Grey Skull. Her sorceress blood, because she's the daughter of the sorceress, will be awakened. So she'll have all of the magic of Eternia surging through her. So she's basically like the Phoenix in a mechanized power suit that will be harnessing the power of the Big Bang because, and she'll have the sort of he, which is, you know, channeling the thing, and she will be the ultimate guardian of Grayskull. Then, you know, then there will be peace in the land. That is, and she, because she will be a warrior goddess queen that none can rival on all of Eternos, on all of Eternia. That was the big conclusion to the series, and then it was going to mm -hmm. spin off into a series with Teela, which is their pitch. Their idea is it's going to be Teela defending Eternia versus the Horde mm -hmm. and versus extra-worldly forces, and it's going to be like, it's it's... They're going to get rid of He-Man and Skeletor completely from the mix, move the uh, franchise forward, move no. the franchise forward, and they're going to have it be Teela versus the Horde, uh, Horde Prime specifically, not Horde Ak, Horde Prime invading Eternia with super-powered, uber-powered uh, Teela as Defender of Eternia, and that's going to be what their series is about. And it's going to be sort of, uh, they throw around Kirby Fourth World a lot in their uh, in their pitch, but I don't think it's going to be anything like Kirby Fourth World because I don't think those motherfuckers know what they're talking about. I think they just sort of know talking points. Ugh, because, I don't uh, think they know anything, man. Yeah, it's a fucking mess. It's an absolute fucking mess. And I'm sorry if that's, this is what happens and you're sitting there at the end going, uh, but you heard it here on Crystal McGee's <laughs> channel first from Liam Gray. Remember it. Yep. Well, that'll get clipped. <laughs> yeah. Probably. You know. You never know. But on to some more uh, current topics after I do a mm -hmm. couple of updates. Mm -hmm. Get those out of the way real quick. For the good night, fulfillment is still ongoing. I have an update that will probably go out tomorrow or Saturday for sure uh, about the new projected fulfillment dates when we're looking to get that fully wrapped up. And all of that good stuff. Um, you can check on some updates because I know Indiegogo's been having issues. And a lot of times when you guys send me the emails directly through them, I'm not properly getting those forwarded. I've contacted them about it. Um, still hasn't been fixed. It's really hard to get a hold of their customer support. Uh, a lot of people have told me that. Um, but So that's what's going on with that. For other updates, you can check on my Twitter at Crystal McGee. That's C R Y S T A L M C G H E. And I do um, some update posts over there. I'm also working on putting a website together for the leftovers when we do that, as well as uh, issue two, the update on that. All of the artwork is finished, and that is going to get ready to launch after we are done fulfilling. The first campaign and we have a fulfillment company lined up for that because i know there's been a lot of issues due to covid and just inexperience this being the first campaign and comic ever that <laughs> i've done there's so much that goes into it that you don't even think about till you're actually there mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. especially if you're just a writer and you're not the artist there's a lot of juggling and managing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. And some of the stuff I've heard now, some people are like, uh, they're just getting done with their campaigns currently. And there's like paper shortages <laughs> yeah. and all sorts of crazy printer stuff going on. It's just yeah, printing it's stuff coming, sh right shutting now. down. Like, like when I did Xenotype, I got hit mm -hmm. with a $13,000 tariff from, oh. uh, so that that was just, that was in addition to, in addition to shipping costs that just came out of nowhere. And uh, then it also the company, the foam company I was using to for additional packaging mm -hmm. closed down a week before shipment after assuring me that my order was coming in over and over and over again. I'm like, where is oh, it? You guys are a week geez. late. Where It's a week late. And then boom, they just closed down. And then no one's taken my calls. The company lines oh. disconnected. The factories closed down. I had, I had a to go, situation yeah. similar to that a little bit where there was a guy that I was talking to from the the printer 
and they actually left the company and nobody told me and i just kept trying to get a hold of this person and then they're like oh hey we haven't caught up with you again this guy like left <laughs> yeah just out of nowhere <laughs> all yeah. right it's it's a pain in the butt you know and then there's there's printing errors that you can come across that you've got to mm -hmm. fix things up with it's uh yeah, it's a, it's 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 a pain in the ass, and people don't realize how much really goes into this. And uh, it's a, you know, they sort of think that we're making a fortune here, making comic books, when you know a lot of us are just sort of scraping by and barely getting enough to do the next one. You know, it's mm -hmm. a, it's so. a lot of juggling for sure. And here's mm -hmm. a little peek at the website that I've started to build a little bit here for uh, mysticalcomics.com. It'll probably launch here in like uh, the next couple of weeks. But the artwork that you see here is actually from issue two of The Good Night. The first couple mm -hmm. of pages, all of the flashbacks are in color, but all of the stuff that's currently happening is still in black and white. So you'll see more of the Arthurian lore and the connection with that in the second issue because uh, Sir Alexander, the teddy bear, was actually once a knight, and he's the dude with the blonde hair right there. And his nemesis with the red hair over there, um, you're going to get to know a little bit more about him. He kind of pops up for like one frame or one panel in uh, the first issue, but you'll kind of dive into that rivalry they have and the fight for the Holy Grail and all that good stuff. So that's pretty neat. And we'll why you gotta, why, why, why you gotta hate why you gotta hate gingers gingers for crystal <laughs> gingers gingers why you gotta villainize why you gotta villainize why you gotta villainize my people you know? why you gotta <laughs> <do it? laughs> too funny but yeah gingers are awesome but you know currently in the media they're <laughs> race swapping all the gingers yeah they, it's like it's on purpose. black faces black, black faces yeah black face is unforgivable unless a ginger does it then apparently it's it's all good exactly yeah. and speaking of other things uh we have some more current events to talk about uh the scarlett johansson <laughs> lawsuit What's going, on that she has going on currently i'll share that what? on my screen real quick yeah i don't know anything about it what's uh What's, what's so SJ doing? basically what, you, what, what has into? happened is that she feels that Disney has breached her contract for a uh, black widow and that she's seeking about 50 million in damages and lost bonuses is what's what did, happened. What did that. Disney allegedly do? Well, they are saying, let me try to share the screen here again. Mm -hmm. But she feels that by it being on uh, Disney Plus, there we go, it being on Disney Plus and also being in theaters, it has caused her film to be, uh, according to a lot of outlets, the lowest earning Marvel <laughs> film. She's uh, blaming overall. the poor. She so she thinks that it's effectively damaged her status. That Correct. her character is. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm gonna newsflash, Mrs. Johansson. I know you don't read the funny books, but uh, you know, uh, Black Widow. She ain't too popular. She ain't. People aren't lining up around the corner for uh, for for Black Widow number one. You know what I mean? Which like she's never been a very popular it character. Will, it wouldn't get as high as some other entries into the franchise for sure mm -hmm. but yeah it's definitely i can see from just the standpoint of it has definitely damaged her brand it being on disney plus because some people are like well i don't want to pay what is it the 20 or 30 dollars it makes for disney plus yeah it makes yeah. sense just i think where that, they really went wrong i think where they really went wrong was they didn't put her in blackface you know um <laughs> as a ginger I think that her movie would have done a lot better if we just had a black Black Widow. I mean, it's in the name, right? So, because putting you know. aside like all of the marketing leading up to the film, which did not help it at all, um, it that was definitely a detractor for a lot of people. But yeah. I feel like it still should have done a little bit better than it did. 
And I think the the story for sure didn't help, but they definitely didn't help putting it out on both because Marvel has always had a strong theater showing for mm -hmm. a lot of their films. I mean, even Ant Man, it did okay. It should have at least done better than Ant Man, I feel, just because of the character's popularity. And she's really, been, I feel I like it so. should have. I feel like it should have. No, I don't think so. Ant-Man is a masked hero. He's a masked superhero that had a little bit more in common with Tony Stark. So from a marketing standpoint, kids are going to give that more of a go than Black Widow, who they sort of know and they've seen, and she, there's not much really to her that's all that interesting. People aren't interested in the USSR and Soviet stuff. Like I mean, I love, stuff, you know? I love Ant-Man, uh, the Hank Pym yeah. version uh, from the mm -hmm. comics. I have mm -hmm. so many of his appearances, but I feel like just the way that they did that film, it could have done so much more and it could have been so many more things that I feel yeah. like that's why it kind of got what it did during its opening. And it also, you know, the new Ant-Man movie is a, uh, is a heist movie. You know what I mean? So, like, people love heist movies. They're great cinema. And they, it, you're trying to compete with a spy movie. And if you ain't James Bond, you ain't a great spy movie most of the time. That's the sort of general consensus of public, you know, audiences. You know, uh, it's just like, yeah, I don't know. I just, mm. she's, now, this, Valenid brings up a good point. They mm. def this definitely was a film that was a little, a little too late. But I feel yeah. like outside of that, still it should have done, should have done a little bit, a tiny bit better than it did. I think that I Felix mean, Disney was definitely against her in a lot of. Oh my god, monster. they had Taskmaster. In, did that? That was definitely awful, dude. That was. I haven't awful seen it. Twist. That's an awful twist. What so, did they do? What did they do to Taskmaster? He's one of my favorite villains. Chick. It's a chick now. Oh, all right. But all of the all of the stunts, it's obviously a male stuntman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but then they they bring out this chick and they put her in the outfit and she's so tiny when they do the the full body camera view, so tiny. And I was like, dude, that did not look like the guy that was doing those stunts <laughs> earlier in the film who was way Doesn't smaller. it suck when like that's what that's the thing that's the problem i have too when i was like watching the marvel movies and everything mm. i feel like i could just push over like you know sj i feel like i could just push these like if this if this woman came ninja flipping up to me with like kung fu claws i feel like i could just sort of push her over like me liam <laughs> and it's uh that's not how you want to convey power and strength and super heroics you know you See, need this this is another good point it did feel like a first wave movie and that's why I okay. figured it wasn't going to do the best because this is definitely a little too late. But, you mm -hmm. know, as far as them just totally doing this film a disservice, you know, it's it's insane. And then the chick's head on a man's body. <laughs> could it? Could, 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 yikes. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, but what were you going to say? Sorry. I just, I just, I, I want to care, but I can't anymore. <laughs> I, just, I, I feel you. Cause some of this stuff, it's just like, Oh, they, they just race swapped again. All right. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I just feel like, like people like when I get all fired up and angry, that's what they want to see. And I just, I can't do it anymore guys. Cause everything's shit. Like everything is just like, it's like getting genuinely angry requires me to be personally slighted now. Now I just sort of look at this stuff that's going on and I'm like, well, they, uh, they killed masters of the universe. I broke my heart and, uh, everything else is shit. Everything is shit. You know, like there's just, maybe I'm depressed. Maybe I need to They're seek counseling. They've been trying to do a number on transformers for a while. Oh yeah, like I could give you a whole bunch of shit about the Transformers comic if you haven't read them. They're fucking Ooh. a nightmare right now. We're talking like fucking Ooh, like I've, I've seen oh. some of it and I don't like it. It's yeah, it's cool. like we're gonna have a war. We're gonna have we're gonna take a property that is fundamentally about 
uh, tyranny versus liberty, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to make it about trans issues and um, and gay marriage and like Wait, they're robots. Wait a minute, and, pro and pronouns. Wait a yeah. No. Do you know that RC, Robots the most famous? Do you know that RC? Well, exactly, but they do now. Do you know that the uh, they? It's so much so that they dedicate entire pages to, in fact, in double page spreads to it. You know, in the book, like wait, wait a like minute. instead of that again, it, that I, that went right over. <laughs> I said that well, they do now. You know, so much oh, so that God. they will dedicate double entire double page spreads to it. Right? Oh. Did you know that RC? The pink car robot that's in Transformers the movie, Fantastic. the most famous female. Yes. Yeah, she's a tranny now. She's a tranny Stop robot. It, she's a man. Cool. Look, I'm not being mean. I'm not being nasty. Oh. I'm not using that as an insult. I, I mean, some people that don't like just, tranny as a word, but I grew up. Character. I grew up with. A, I grew up with a tranny on a hill, and she called herself a tranny. So if you're saying that that's a horrible word, a hate word, why is she using it? She never had. She never had an issue. Stop changing language. But I don't mean to be hateful. But they changed Arcee's origin that she was a dude, and they're like, we need a spy. So they chained her to a desk, used buzz saws and chainsaws to augment her and change Stop. her into a, into a dude, woman. This just and then, even this and then reprogrammed and then reprogrammed her dude. to be a sleeper assassin. You know, that's, uh, that's what they did, right? It's mm -hmm. like, and I'm just like, so that's what they did with, uh, that's what they did with, uh, with fucking, with Arcee. So like Arcee's not a woman, a natural woman. <sighs> she's a, she's an identifying woman. And I'm just like, sorry. Why would you do that? Like, just, just make a new character for that type of, I just, and then yeah. again, like we circle back to these are like alien robots robots for the most yeah. part and it's like they have no yeah i know it's so dumb just so <laughs> this isn't what people are here to watch robots like bashing we're not here <laughs> for this oh boy dude yeah yeah i like i just i what yeah no i'm not joking i'm not joking i'm not being hyperbolic as i sometimes do is that the like, idw run or yeah, who yeah, has that's the it IDW done. Yeah, IDW. Yeah. Okay. Oof. And there's other there's other stuff that's just as just heinously stupid. I could go into a whole stream on it. I just don't want to. Just um, <laughs> I love Transformers. Look, I got Tripticon sitting there, and you know you can see there's Predator King. I'm like just behind it, right there. there nice Megatron. And I've got uh, up here is Devastator. You know. Ooh. And uh, over here, I've got Optimus. I mean, yeah, and Optimus is up there on top of my castle as well. Yeah. You know, like, I'm a, I am love this stuff. I have I the love giant stuff, Unicron which... figure, man. It's awesome. Oh, you actually got the ha yeah. got HasLab Unicron. Dude, it's safely, it's safely in storage. Safely yeah, wow. in storage so I can display it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Be very, very careful with it because I've heard that the plastic used in the uh, in the antennae that attach to the body is extremely fragile, and so it's probably going to become more fragile with time. So be very, very careful with it. Mm -hmm. Will do. Yeah, it's still in the. I box. didn't know that you. Dude, I found yeah. one that was in the box. It's unopened, and I don't have many things like that in my collection where it's actually in the box besides that in this game called earthbound i have it like the mm -hmm. manual everything all inside intact it's crazy yeah. for a time i considered sparing your wretched planet you know like i fucking love yes. unicron and like, like star scream is awesome too i know some people hate him but He's amusing to me. No, Starscream is great. He is like, I, I he's basically a uh, a type of character from uh from classic Arthurian stories that you don't see modernized very often. He's he's basically uh he's basically like an evil duke. That's what he mm -hmm. sort of is as a character, the traitorous evil duke that's always vying for the king's power, but is subservient to the uh, to the evil king. Like you'll find that all through literature and 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 like 
I, I love that. And I think that like, he's a, uh, it's awesome. I mean, that's the reason that he even has his head shaped the way he does. Cause it's a reference to the Jack training card. And it's mm -hmm. like, he's an interesting character. And I just, uh, I think that we sort of go, Oh yeah, Starscream sucks. He's a coward and all of this, but keep in mind that this dude was going to be crushed alive in transformers. The movie and motherfucker was so <laughs> metal. He shot his own foot off. He shot exactly. his own fucking foot off exactly. rather than being like, dude, that movie was awesome. Yeah. I just, yeah. I can't get enough. And just the, the soundtrack. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, totally. Totally. I didn't know you're a huge Transformers fan. This oh, makes I'm, it, me and yeah. my brother, massive, <laughs> massive. No, that's awesome. It's like, uh, you know, that, uh, yeah, it is. And I, I had a, a millennial friend, you know, who um, grew up at a time where he never got to see what Transformers was. And I was like, Transformers, Transformers, God. Transformers. And he was like, yeah, Liam, of course, all of your gay retro stuff. <laughs> I was like, I was like, no, like, it's good. It's good. And he's like, we'll see. So we have a movie night. And I'm like, let's put on Transformers movie. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he groans, he groans. And I was like, dude, it's good. And he's like, fine. You have fine. Leonard so, Nimoy. You can't yeah. believe it. Leonard Nimoy, awesome, awesome. So I put it on, right? The whole movie plays through. The movie ends and he goes, Liam, you're right. That's really good. Is there more stuff like this? Is this like a one-off thing? <laughs> is there like?" And I was like, no, dude, that's how, like, this is sort of top of the mountain, you know what I mean? But like, mm. this is how much better 80s stuff was than modern stuff. He's like, oh, I dude, only saw. There was a block where they had like Transformers, they had G.I. Joe and Gem and the Holograms. And that was, that was the time. Yeah, for and sure. the reruns of that stuff, amazing, dude. Just to imagine that you have a block like that of all of those different shows and all the different audiences that that services is insane. You won't. That's what I want. Like that's that what today. Well, you will if you back my book. Exactly. You know, I don't want to be. I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> but you will if you back my book. Look, there's a reason that uh that this is atrophied and failed and people you know what annoys me people you've, you've i'm sure you've heard this being a uh, an 80s nerd but uh but people say oh yeah these were all just glorified 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 ladies and glorified toy commercials right mm -hmm. that's the talking point everyone uses yeah you realize that you had motherfucking censors sitting there with a gun to the head not a little i'm using metaphor here with a gun to the head the writing staff going these better have substance and meaning because if these stories do not, then we will not publish your script. We will not, you know, produce it, you know? So, um, so there's an actual level of quality that is, that is higher, like the moral story and the underlying fiber of these sort of classic modern fables through that came out of these eighties cartoons that is higher than what we're currently getting where there is no oversight in that regard. And right? the lessons that you get with a lot of this stuff, like circling back to He-Man and like G.I. Joe, you'd have like all of this stuff where you have these friendship type metaphors, you have working together as a group, you have all yeah. of these life lessons that you're learning. And yeah, yeah. Just today you have absolutely nothing and complete dribble. Yeah, and I was just over on Red Gaze's channel just before I popped over here, you know, and I was talking about exactly that. It's funny, it's come up twice now, but, you know, uh, again, I grew up in a pretty abusive home, you know, where poor me, right? But um, these these comic books and these uh, these cartoons were my escape. And uh, for, it, this isn't just me. This is a story as old as time. This is a lot of uh, a lot of boys when they well, don't have good role person. models. Yeah, when they don't have good role models, we'll look to superheroes. We'll look to these larger-than-life heroes for inspiration. And uh, we had these stories that were great moral fables mm -hmm. about, you know, like what was right, what was wrong, justice, injustice, like you said, friendship, working together as a team, you know. Um, and that shit doesn't exist anymore. It's just sort of laughed mm -hmm. at. Well, I'm like, like, well, you, you know. These, like, you know, Greek tales, Arthurian legend, all of this stuff where you just learn lessons. And like mm -hmm. uh, Oliver said, you know, cautionary tales. And mm -hmm. just now you have, what, what do you have when you go look over at Marvel? You have like a pregnant spider woman. You have all sorts of stuff that does nothing and appeals to no one and then you look to dc and you have i'm not starfire <laughs> the teen 
teen yeah. teen teen yeah teen mom spider-man <laughs> it's like uh, marvel comics 2022 come get it now you don't miss out <laughs> and then what do you have you have like gwenpool and you have all of this insane stuff and like miss marvel it's not help logan isn't help sailing it isn't so help yeah help logan deal with his porn addiction i thought that i was <laughs> above reproach uh, I, I was indestructible, but now I found. Water. Yeah, wow. now I found that I need. Uh, I, I have a problem, and I need help. You know, and nobody wants to see that. Yeah, no one gives a fuck. It's terrible. It's what it is. <laughs> but uh, at least it could be terrible and funny. You could make exactly. it so bad that it was funny, but they can't even do that because they play it straight because they've got no sense of irony. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. They think that they're being ironic, but they're just being lame. And it's like, just just make these characters what they're meant to be, epic and high-flying and inspirational, you know? Like, that's what I want to see. Mm -hmm. it's like, and like, Oliver makes another good point here. He says that I've noticed mm -hmm. G.I. Joe has a lot of episodes where Cobra and the G.I. Joes have to team up to face a common enemy, and that's so true. Mm-hmm. And I mean, a yeah. lot of times that circles back to just if, you know, you don't have to always agree with people on different things, <laughs> but as long as you hear them out and like you guys can agree to disagree, that's what's important and go on about your business. But people, unfortunately, a lot of times can't even do that and they can't show mutual mutual respect for one another which is that's very been the story of my life <laughs> that's been the story of my life in this whole space that's exactly what's going on it's like hey i'm just gonna go over here and do my own thing and it's like no we have to dunk on you repeatedly just dunk on you repeatedly <laughs> alienate you say like oh you can't go on streams or you're not gonna get somewhere else like it's all it's all stupid like you realize that like i'm actually I'm here out here making these books, not just to make a dollar. Like there's eat like right now I would be making more money flipping burgers at McDonald's. Or maybe I wouldn't be COVID safe anymore. You know what I mean? Maybe I wouldn't have my special little sticker, <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm doing this because I, I truly love this medium and I love the fans. I'm not saying that ironically. I'm not saying that to kiss ass. I truly do. Um, I think that, you know, most of the greatest authors of the uh, of recent history uh, were comic book fans and were cartoon fans. Again, you, you, Gaiman will talk about this for hours, you know, the uh, the influence that it's had on him and other, mm -hmm. and again, other authors, you know, like uh, there's another guy, like my mentor, I won't mention who he is, but uh, he once had a two and a half hour conversation with me about Pinocchio and how much Pinocchio influenced him as a child. You know, like these works actually create some of the greatest legacy writers of all time because they're jumping on points what we're doing is we're creating jumping on points for people and it's like you know that's what i'm doing here with wonder island so please back you can get it at a, a cheap ten dollar digital tier which is basically as much as you throw away on the average super chat these days you know um so if you don't want to grab the whole book but you still want to show support there's a way you can do it you know mm -hmm. help and get this out the there tend in the chat as well Thank you. Thank you. You know, and I keep having people tell me it looks great. It looks fun. All of this. Yep. Awesome. Black it. I need this, you guys to back but it. But I've realized is you really have to, you can have like the greatest product, but it's all about connecting with that audience. And sometimes it can be frustrating from where we're yeah. sitting, trying to get it out there. Cause you have all of these people saying this looks amazing. You know, I haven't seen stuff like this in a while all of this and it's just like you really have to push hard and it's a daily grind to get it out there try to connect with that audience and sometimes it doesn't happen overnight you know a lot of times yeah. nothing really does. it doesn't end up I mean, happening that way I, I, I strategically planned out my campaign meticulously and completely overlooked the fact that my core audience were fans of uh dark science fiction super superheroes mm. and so basically no one from my first campaign jumped over a few people did because the genre is so radically different to what my first book was and i went whoops i completely that was a massive oversight like i cannot understate so basically i'm building in a whole new branch of audience here this is a chance for people to jump on and support me all over again as i as i keep this keep this wheels rolling mm -hmm. um 
at least until we uh we crank out xenotype 2 then we might have a big jump up but as it is don't think that this is just a silly little fairy tale that's full of codes and and fun stuff it's uh it's meant to be an all-age adventure it's i want you to be able to go and have this reading experience and uh and have it be rewarding for everyone you know of all ages it should be good enough that it's uh that it's that it's not talking down to children and that it's not too babyish for for grown men Adults. you know <laughs> yeah because it's a hard balance trying to do that and i feel like a it lot is. of times people fail when it comes to that because you have mm -hmm. properties like power rangers that a lot of people loved you know, in their younger years, but now you're just like, they're not, you have to kind of service both of those age groups. So once your, your fans that are kids transition to adults, you have to kind of have something that works for them as well, or you're just completely focusing on that child demographic. Yeah. And uh, I think that we're in serious risk of losing comic books for a reason that mm -hmm. people continue to overlook. Like people say, there's always going to be comics. There's manga and all of that. It's like, well, I'm having a hard time. I've got 1.71 or something million views on my manga. I've got massive manga following. Like, you know, in the manga community, Liam walks into a room and they go, oh my God, is that the Liam Gray? Like that's how I'm treated in the fucking manga community. And over here in the in the comic community where I'm like crowdfunding, it's like, um, you know, I'm a pariah. I'm, I'm, I'm radioactive. It's sort of like it's hard to even get on appearances with shows that are brave enough to have me on. So thank you, Crystal. But I can't convert the, uh, the manga audience into buyers. I just don't know what I'm doing wrong because uh, it just seems like most of the manga audience are younger people who don't have disposable income and um, and they just will read pirated stuff for free and uh, they're not Which really interested in like helping. That's the issue as well because um, mm -hmm. they've, they've brought it up in different things. Like Viz has, I believe, a subscription where it's like yeah. 5 or $10 and you can see unlimited stuff and they're still mm -hmm. having issues with piracy because like you said, it is a lot of younger fans over here um, in the U.S. Yeah. and I'm sure Australia as well and, you know, yeah. other territories that aren't Japan. And that's, you know, it's a thing that's tough to tackle and it's always kind of going to be there for sure. Yeah, we need we need it to take off, though. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like we we need uh, people to be willing. That's why I did the digital tier at all for 10 bucks because I thought maybe I can convince just a few manga readers who are my target demographic mainly to uh come in and get a get a rich experience out of this now um but no it's i've struggled with it and it's uh i know that that's not a, a great selling point but i want to be honest with my audience it's like i did as well as i did on xenotype one on wonder island on the first day i did the nearly the exact same numbers i was like three sales off my first day uh, earnings and then the second day i didn't get any more customers and the third day i got one and the next day i got two and like that's what that's sort of so happened that's so nerve-wracking when you're crowdfunding yeah. and it's a totally it different experience if you've never done anything like this i mean a lot yeah. of times you're new going into it but there's so many different facets it's like you're promoting your book on shows you're pushing out campaign updates as you should and you're yeah. trying to do all of this stuff and then you're also getting questions coming in and it's from so many different uh just avenues. and you know i'm finding it hard to get people like i said i'm finding it hard to get people that'll put me on shows because everyone sort of got a different opinion about me and it's like well have you ever interacted with me have you ever taken the time to really get to know me or talk to me or have you just seen short little 30 second clips where i'm feigning being angry or goofing it up for the camera to get laughs out of people like just take the time to actually talk to me about what i'm doing but instead you know and you've got people that are like radical idealists whether they're free speech extremists because i'll block people from my chat which is apparently unforgivable but if I don't, then I'll end up with a whole bunch of people that will come in and harass the other people in my chat and kill my channel, which is what originally happened. Now, I went away to focus on production of a couple of comic books that I've got in works at the moment, including Wonder Island. And uh, 
I wasn't really keeping my streaming going. I just, I sort of let my channel atrophy and I only did mm -hmm. streams here and there to keep my monetization, you know? Cause I've and, definitely uh, fallen into that. Cause I was doing yeah. pretty regular uh, week to week shows. And then I was mm -hmm. just fully focusing on the campaign and other stuff that was going on. And yeah, the channel, <laughs> but I'm yeah, going to yeah. try to do more weekly mm -hmm. episodes for sure. And all that. But, yeah. yeah, but I, I sort of let it atrophy and uh and people sort of went, look, Liam let Liam gave up his power and it's like so it's like people that I thought would be totally down for helping me out just ghosted me. I was no longer of value to them. They their channel grew beyond the size of mine. And even though I had them on all the time and I thought we were friends, just silence, radio silence. I'm like, hey, will you help with the book? You know? Uh I'm not looking to do a shill stream, I'm just looking to hang out and talk. You know, mm -hmm. let people know that I'm out here, what I'm doing, and hopefully the customers will see it, know that they can trust me to deliver because I met all my deadlines on my last book. I produced a 200-page graphic novel, beautiful quality. You know, um, you know, maybe they'll, uh, maybe they'll, uh, maybe they'll back, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, but it's just been, it's been hard going. It's just been slogging it through and, uh. Yeah, it's a shame because I dedicated this book to my daughter and I wanted it to at least be half as successful. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And it's uh, it's sort of hard to be doom and gloom. You're meant to be always like, oh, I'm doing so well. But it's like, let's be real here. This is a lot of weight and responsibility on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't want to say that this is easy. It's not, you know. Marketing is seems to be more about politics than product and, uh Especially I'm not really much when you're of a politician. A, show a lot of the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I ain't a politician. You know what I mean? I'm, you know, that ain't my scene. I don't want to play games. I just want to make my books and, you know, create stuff that people will love again, like in, in the 80s and, and before, you know, like these, like with your Arthurian legends that you're doing, you know, with your own book, it's like these are stories that have endured for thousands of years. Why are we and now there's focusing a reason, on the stories? Exactly. There's yeah, a reason yeah. that this stuff has been around so long. And I feel mm -hmm. like the best, when people come on to something and they tackle that, I feel like as long as they're true to the just the lore and the vibe of that, because there's people that will come to Arthurian legend and they'll just try to change stuff and they're like gender yeah. swapping like king arthur it's like dude <laughs> yeah it's like look if it's like... actually adding to it and bringing new things to the table i feel like that is part of the reason stuff like that keeps on you know just chugging along yeah and you can have a lot of great stuff like like i, I read this earlier i read this earlier but i'll read it again to the audience so they sort of get a vibe of what they get a little bit of what they're getting here with Aaron and stuff it says uh, this is Aaron. He says, I've been fostered and trained by all the great masters of Brightwater. I am wise. I direct all the judgment of the Queen of Eternity. I am a great host at feasts, sharing gifts and spoils. I aid in honor and fines. Uh, Finobar trained me, uh, sorry, Finobar trained me that I might slay mighty warriors through my valor. I am fierce. I am able to guard the borders of the land and against foreign foes. I am a shelter to every poor man, a rampant to fight for every rich man. I give comfort to every wretch. I deal mischief to every strong man. I can surpass any man in valor, combat, skills, splendor, cleverness, injustice, and in boldness i am a match for any war chief and i give thanks and i give thanks to no one but denu ulla has trained me has trained me so that i am sorry ulla has trained me so that i am skillful in the sylvan arts so that i am learned in the excellencies of knowledge i fight for honor uh, sorry i fight for the honor of I fight for the honor of all alike. Honorably, I've been asked now by my conscience to journey through the tumultuous lands of Doomspire that I might slay a dragon and set right the things that I've made wrong. Like, these are classic sort of folkloric, mm -hmm. powerful sort of, you know, sort of messages that we can sort of put through our uh, through our work. And this this is just sort of the essence of what uh, Arrowin is as a, as a warrior, as a young boy, you know, like that's a bit more serious than he is through most of the book, but that's his sort of formal introduction about who he is. When, when the dragon there is like, who are you, boy? Who are you, you know? Who are you to stand and stare me in the eyes and equal, you know? And uh, 
this is the powerful, cool stuff we can do. And it's just like, but we need to get the chance to do that. We need the opportunity to, uh, to actually be able to create these great stories. And, Mm -hmm. um, that's what I want to be doing with my life. You know, I want to help people and I want to make great stories. So, because I mean, even if you think about like uh, comics, like when Green Lanterns, like you're kind of talking a little bit about your character in that, you know, heroic speech, you'd have stuff like the Green Lantern Corpse Oath, you know. Exactly, you know. That was, yeah. that was so hype, like, you know, in Brightest Day and Darkest Night, and not. you're just, oh, yeah, let's go, guys. Yeah, no, evil shall escape my sight. Like yeah. those who worship evil's might. You know, like it's it's mm-hmm. awesome. Like you know, and Guy Gardner is the best Green Lantern. What? <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Let's. I, I don't know about that. Man. Hashtag represent. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Ginger Pride. Ginger Pride. <laughs> oh, too funny. But yeah, that <laughs> oath was so hype. That's like you're ready to go fight some battles with that dude. Mm-hmm. Ready yeah. to go fight, and a lot of this, like you're saying, like the just the heroism is just <laughs> yeah, severely no... lacking in where is the everything mythic... now so it's yeah, nice where... to see it here in your book mm-hmm. and on display because it's you. just insane we got to bring stuff like this back guys because the only way stuff is going to change is one if you ignore what people are putting out there i mean you can talk about it but the yeah. best way to just handle that is to ignore it and then just continue to work and build your own stuff and if you want to see something you know try to bring that out there for people for sure yeah and i do have a question liam like what is the the anime manga community like out there uh, for you in australia and what's the convention scene like out that way well, we don't really have much of a convention scene. Uh, we're limited to a few little Facebook groups that are not very active. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's sort of a bit difficult, to be frankly honest with you. But I'm looking to sort of take on the uh, the con scene uh, this year, hopefully. But again, COVID's making it really, really impossible. And I've got a baby, you know. I would like to get together with everyone and uh, in Australia and do a big... Uh, and do a big sort of, you know, push through that. And I'd sort of organized and planned a bit of that. But, um, I mean, I, I don't like talking negative stuff, but I mean, I'm pretty much shunned. So, I mean, it's like, I've got a few guys that are kind of my buddies, kind of, but it's like, I don't think that it's really worth me investing a ton of financial uh, effort into other people that basically aren't even going to do the courtesy of, you know, like retweeting my my book you know like my countrymen who who you know i thought were in my corner have uh, largely just sort of left me out here on a rock and i know that there was a uh, specifically one guy that was pretty upset that i said i'm the top selling crowd funder in australia and i am beat me and then i can't say that anymore but um but you know it was just mostly for hyperball but I thought that we'd all be able to come together like a big community and uh, do really well here in the Indies. But now I really think that there really is just sort of Conquest Comics and me. And uh, that's all I can really count on. No one else is actually going to help me, even if, you know, they're all just waiting till they get bigger than you. And then as soon as you sort of give any sort of seed, any power, or they get bigger than you, then they're going to just turn on you. It uh, sucks. It sucks hard. But I thought it was different here. You know, I thought it was different in this corner of the uh, community, but I think that it's just the same everywhere. And now at this point, and uh, so, yeah, um, it's just going to be me as far as I can tell, you know, like, I know that's negative, but I mean, it's just, uh, this is one of those things where it's like, you don't think it's the case. And then you sort of, you're getting into my situation like, oh, wow, I've actually really have, had everyone turn on me haven't i like it wasn't just a joke everyone really is fucking left put me out on a raft and kicked me out to sea. it's like okay. that that also reminds me there's this a uh, speech that uh mark duplass he's indie filmmaker and he did this speech at like south by southwest i think it was 2015 but he yeah. started off his speech early on saying about uh with filmmaking that the cavalry isn't coming and that mm-hmm. you really have to soak that in, that the cavalry's not coming. 
and you have to really push yourself if you want it you have to go out there make people mm -hmm. see your how you see it through your point of view and really get your thing out there and, you know don't yeah. give up because there's times that oh, stuff isn't I hitting won't. right now it might just not be the time but oh yeah you know i'm not on. i'm not yeah, I'm not. I'm not giving up. I've got a plan for three for three steps beyond this. But what, what my perspective changed? See, I came in here with a five year plan, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, I can measure five years worth of failure. But now I've got a baby coming. You know what I mean? And I've got a baby coming. I've got a whole bunch of people counting on me, hardcore fans that are you know loyal supporters. You know, mm -hmm. and those guys are awesome. And I don't want to let them down. But there's just not enough of them. And it's like as it is too many people have been swayed against me and it's like, they really think just crazy shit about me. And it's like, look, am, what am I guilty of speaking out against pedophiles? Like, yeah, I, I, so what I put someone into the FBI, I stood up for my intellectual property rights. That means what no one can support me now. It's like, what are we, uh, what are we now? Pedo sympathizers. I'm sick of people pre pretending that they don't know what's going on. We saw what happened with slick Jimmy. We know what's going on. We're like, why are we protecting these people? We've seen the screenshots. Are we just going to pretend that they don't exist? Apparently everyone but me, you know? And it's like, now it's my responsibility to go out and put it out there when the FBI specifically asked me not to, specifically asked me not to get further involved. So I'm trying to do what the fucking law enforcement told me and people are coming down on me for it. It's like, for fuck's sake, I, I try to protect my art and my intellectual property rights and my channel from being struck. And I'm, you know, a bad guy for it. It's so like, I thought we were meant to be independent creators all standing together and standing for something that, you know, was right and justice and just and good. And it's like, apparently the only way that we can do that is if I lead a lynch mob, which I don't want to fucking do, or if I create drama shows, which I don't want to do. I just want to make good books. And if I'm not doing either of those two things, I'm of no value to anyone. And uh, so no help for Liam. It's like, I've got to be angry to sell shit. I don't want to be angry to sell shit, Crystal. Like, mm -hmm. and that's I'm tough trying to do because if you have some kind of like, I guess you could say character and mm -hmm. then you kind of play into that, it's easy to yeah. get stuff at first, but then you come into all of these other problems later on. Yeah. And it's, it's tough because it'd be so easy to just do that character, but to genuinely be you that's a lot yeah. a lot harder yeah and <laughs> that's exactly the issue hey that's exactly the issue hey like i'm trying to be genuine now and i'm trying to you know do what's right and do what i believe in and it's like and create a really awesome property that people can enjoy for all ages something that's going to honor my my daughter's life and the memory of my late dog um you know and it's like this i put all my heart into this xenotype was my technical skill, you know, I put all of my sort of strategy and planning and, and it's sort of a big statement about personal power over corporate control. And, you know, it's, it, that's sort of what it is. And it's sort of a, it's a big superhero book for a new generation of fans. That's how I sort of crafted it. But this was meant to be sort of a timeless tale of, you know, of just spirited adventure and it's a, uh, and I put my heart into it. And the fact that it's a, uh, it's where it's at is just really sort of shocking to me because I thought like, guys, we're going to let Disney control this. You're not even going to give me the power I need to be able to compete, you know, because I can create the product. And I think that I have, you know, um, mm -hmm. that can compete, but if people aren't interested in it, then, you know, it's dead in the water and it's like, okay, so, I got no support over here because the power of gossip and the power of uh, bullshit is more important than what I'm producing. And my art is clearly not valuable enough for people to want to invest in. And I'm just like, but this art is beautiful, you know, like this art is great and it's only going to be better. The whole thing is going to be uh, sort of colored in watercolors and Copic. It's going to look fucking amazing on the inside. These are just filler colors temporary while we get the campaign going. You know what I mean? I've got little mm -hmm. contests there. I've got everything. It's like, and what to be this, to, to basically be successful. I need to pretend that I'm Alex Jones. Like, can't I just sell on the merit of my work? Which just like, imagine if you're Alex Jones and you have that character, <laughs> that character. Yeah. Well, that's, and that's then what's just going trying on. to get serious. And yeah. then people are like, yeah. what, are, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. 
Exactly, you know. And this character as well, this is something else. Like, this character was really thrust on me by other people as well, and I sort of ran with it at the time because I was like, okay, I'll goof it up. But then, like, now I'm at where I'm at, I'm like, you know, I'm going to be a role model to a little girl. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to have publishers that I'm in potential deals with, big publishers, mm-hmm. like, look at this and then be like, what's up with this? And then later find out, oh, yeah, you knew about all of this stuff and you stood by and did nothing. I'm like, no, I have to stand by my principles. So if I know someone's involved in something really seedy, especially, you know, regarding kids, I need to walk away. And it's like, it sucks because like, you know, I w- part of me wants to just get out there and be like, fucking put, put this person on blast, you know, cause it's wrong. I had their, I had to talk the father of this kid on the Facebook. Like they contacted me. That's how I know. Cause like the father of the kid contacted me via Facebook and was like, I'm going to kill this fucking guy. Look what's going on. All right. And I was like, don't do it. Just go to the police, go to the police. We have to serve justice. We have to serve mm-hmm. justice. Exactly. And it's like, and like, until proven guilty, we have to follow. Exactly. Him. And I just have, and it's like, oh, name this person, da, da, launch this lynch mob. And I'm just like, I, I shouldn't have said as much as I have. I shouldn't have said as much as I have. And it's like, you know, just like, okay, all right. You know, but to these other people, it's all politics, huh? And it's just like, I can't seem to get away from it. I shouldn't even be talking about it now, but it's just, you know, I've been told over and over again, oh, Liam, it's because of this. It's because of this stuff. Like, no one's going to buy your book. And I'm like, this stuff was self-defense and stuff that I was not ever involved in in any way. It's literally me going, I don't want to be involved in this stuff. I'm walking away. I'm being blamed for the actions of other people. Like, and so what people aren't going to buy my book. I'm sorry. I'm not funny. You know what I mean? I try to be funny, but it's like, it's like, I don't know. I, I just want to go my own way and find my audience. And, uh, I don't want that to be just in peddling outrage all the time. I, I, like, I just don't want to do that. Um, and sometimes, and like, your audience will click later. Like, a great example yeah. is Pablo Romero. He had amazing art. At first, he was oh. having issues trying to get people to follow him and all this stuff. And now he did, like, a, sort of, what was it, Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel uh, image. And that really popped off for him. And now he has a lot of people on his page following him liking what he's putting out there and sometimes it's just kind of being you giving that personal commentary on stuff that you love and care about and eventually at some point down the line it clicks and then you know a lot of times it's like you're just ahead you're ahead (laughs) you're ahead of time (laughs) with stuff yeah yeah and you know like it's hard to people say don't complain just keep smiling and winning and i'm like you know what like my whole but it's channel it's tough when you're down man yeah you it's know? tough when you're down and you think like all your friends betray you and it's like you just like oh okay so i guess you know all of the kind things and good things i did for you meant nothing in the end you know it's kind of like and then you're you're hard pressed to find people that'll actually just sit down and be real and just have an honest conversation like what we're having here like so mm-hmm. i'm very thankful that you gave me the opportunity to just come and hang out you know um no problem because i think that great. i do have a i do have a good book it's not just like an all right book it's like a <laughs> i have a great book mm-hmm. it's, it's definitely like a, giving me like digimon vibes for sure i love that as a kid but you know awesome. more a little bit more serious of a take yeah. not too serious where the kids aren't going to enjoy it but serious yeah. enough that it's treating the the audience the younger audience with respect with respect which is so you're, hard when, now yeah and when you when you go through this you're gonna at least have four laughs I, i'll guarantee three there are three scenes that like every time i've told someone they've gone oh my god liam and they've laughed i'm going win you know um <laughs> And there's going to be a, there's going to be a, there's going to be like, like actual battles with stakes. You know what I mean? Like people are going to have wooden stakes. Yeah. Yeah. No, in all seriousness. No, you're exactly right. And I'm not talking wooden stakes. I'm talking like, uh, (laughs) there's going to be, there's going to be actual consequences for stuff. You know, that's what we're looking to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And to just just, to 
interject here real quick. Uh, if any of yeah. you guys have questions for Liam in the chat, uh, get those posted. We'll be wrapping up here shortly. I like to yeah, keep is, these a little bit shorter that way, so people that people can, can check them out. out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I've got to get out of here anyway because anyone who's sort of in the chat that might want to come by every day about half an hour from now. I do a show called uh, Whip Wonder Island Production Stream or mm -hmm. Work in Progress. I've caught where, a couple uh, of those on the back end, yeah. Yeah, where we just sort of goof off, talk, and uh, you could just sort of does a bit of her art live for you guys, talks, and, you know, let you guys get to know her. She's a lovely artist. This is her first real project. All of her previous works have been fan works. I've been training her up, getting her sort of to pro levels. I mean, and she's really talented, and it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. So mm -hmm. if you haven't, please go and check out Wonder Island. Give it a back. Uh, mm -hmm. Give it a chance. Help make this possible. You know, we've got a bunch of cool stuff to send you guys. And, uh, you know, don't be don't be late on the boat. You know, be good with guys. It was like I was there in the beginning when Liam was struggling to find new people. And I was I contributed. I helped pushed it up to 60, you know. And now there's a whole bunch of people, you know. If we can hit a 1,000, it'd be great. And I ain't given up, you know. We ain't done yet. Exactly. We ain't done the best yet. way to see the stuff you like again is to support it and back it because people always say and especially with movies uh yeah. you know we want to see new stuff well if you want to see new stuff you have to support the new stuff that's coming out and a lot of times like there's stuff like films horror films like hereditary they're like we want to see new horror films and a lot of these guys, when you do do stuff that is new and you put it out there, obviously there's going to be different things that you could have done better. You could have tightened this up a little bit more, just like in that film. But you have to look at the bigger picture, say, hey, this is this guy's first film. He's trying something new. We should, if we want to see more stuff like this, we have to support it because they just jump on it. Amen. And they're like, Amen. Hey, and that's this right. Is like, we want to see new stuff, but then they're like, well, we don't want to see that type of new stuff. And it's like you're new and you're still trying to, you know, work it. So that's yeah. It's like my it's like my studio. I built my studio right. This lovely little studio from the hand, from the ground up. You know, just to bring it full circle. And uh, everyone said, "Oh, you can't do it, Liam." Or well, they made fun of me for it. And then when I finished it, they were like, "Oh, it's it's like oh, it's a treehouse." It's that's like no, it's a uh, it's made to sort of you know so I can do my YouTube and store all of my geeky nerd stuff, and it's to give me a workplace to do fulfillment from that's more streamlined and than the uh, than the than the storage shed that I had to use for my first product. It's uh, the first step. Now, people get behind me. The more money you give me, the better stuff I can do. And I'm someone that's willing to get his hands dirty to do it. And I'm willing to put in the time and sacrifice and make the sacrifices necessary to give you the things that are being taken away from you. And if you're not willing to support me, I can't do that. It doesn't just magically happen. You're not going to just... In there aren't creators that are going to be willing to sacrifice as much of their time and their life to produce work for you as, as me, there just aren't that many that are willing to give up their daily life or have the financial freedom to be able to sacrifice their daily life to sit here and be here. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, a lot I've of times when you do a campaign, it's like a full time job. It is. It is. I wake up, I woke up, I came down here. I had to do a promotional stream. I had to do this stream today uh, after I finish this in less than half an hour, I'm going to have to go over and do my own stream. Then I need to do uh, page illustration work. Then I need to do like uh, some video writing for this afternoon. Then my missus gets home. I have dinner and I'll write advertisement through the, uh, through dinner and look for more people that are willing to promote and, you know, like actually showcase the product. And then I'll go to sleep and I'll wake up and I'll do the next thing the next day. That's my routine guys. Yeah. I have no time for myself yesterday. My free time was building my, uh, building the studio, not the studio, the, uh, the building the, uh, the nursery for the baby, right. And decorating mm -hmm. all of that. that and that was, that was my free time I had. It took me an hour, you know? And even during that, I was working, doing something else. That's so it's like, like setting up IKEA this. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I was setting up IKEA desks. I was like putting dactyls all over the walls. I was laying everything out. I had to put in some plyboard into the wall so that there was no sort of cold, cool breeze through the area. Um, I did all that stuff, and you know, it took me an hour. It's like, and then that was my that was my whole day. It's like you guys get to see my life. That's why I call it life with Liam. It's like this is what it is to be a virgining comic book creator, starting it out and pushing it from the ground up. And uh, I hope that you guys see that I'm a hard worker. I'm dedicated to bringing you the best art possible. And uh, I got a lot of love, genuine love for my fans. Yeah. You know? And in closing, Liam, what would you like to tell people about Wonder Island, where they can find you and all that good stuff? Yeah, sure. Uh, you can check me out on Bracket, Conquest Comics Bracket, you know. This is uh, my YouTube channel, you know. Uh, you can find me on RetroBoy1983 on Twitter. And, of course, there is the Wonder Boy, uh, the Wonder Boy, the Wonder Island link in the description. You can go check that out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm all over. Just come and hang out. Back the book. That's all you have to do. I'm not asking for, you know, your lifeblood. It's affordable. <laughs> and the shipping can only go down from here, you know. The costs can only go down. If I can get more backers on this, my next project can be even cheaper, right? And then you guys are going to have prices competitive to the mainstream for your uh, for your Indiegogo crowdfunded books and shipping. I don't think there's anyone else that can really, or at least there are other people that could offer to do that, and they're not. But I will, I will cut slash or I will slash the prices for you, the customer, to make it more easily accessible if you support me. Mm -hmm. But I need that support exactly so. so go support the book if you just want to look at it maybe this doesn't interest you particularly he does have other stuff that you can check out so like he said mm -hmm. check out his twitter uh for me you're on my youtube channel here it's mcgee you can find me again on twitter it's at crystal mcgee and that is c-r-y uh s-t-a-l-m-c-g-h-e-e -E. And you can find me there. I post a lot of times. We are currently fulfilling the good night, close to wrapping up shipping for the U.S. backers. That'll be wrapped pretty soon. We have T-shirts going out, books, trading cards. All that good stuff is on the way to you guys that supported the book. I really appreciate everybody's support. And thanks, Liam, for coming on. We've had a great discussions on a lot of topics and thank you mm -hmm. mods in the chat for modding and all that good stuff that you guys do and we will catch you probably here in a week or two on my channel with some other creators and more current events definitely a horror stream here and there because there's <laughs> so many things that are that's going on within the horror movies and all that good stuff oh yeah we can talk horror anytime you want i'm a huge horror buff right i'm a nice. huge horror buff I have a sure. massive horror. Yeah, I have a massive collection of horror. I don't know if you can spot it real quick before you go, but there's all Tales of the Crypt, Masters of Horror. I've got oh, Tales of the Dark. Sweet, I've got, see that? That's Tales of the Dark Side. These are all my horror anthology series up there. Mm -hmm. I've got a little, another one up there. Things, But yeah, no, I love horror. Love horror. That's where I cut my teeth. So Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks, you guys in the chat for showing up. It's been really awesome and active. So thanks for that, guys. And we'll see you yep. next time. Have a good night, guys. Excellent, guys.